hope that you're having a great Sunday. I want to invite you to stand up, look around, find somebody that maybe you've not seen before or you've not seen them in a while. Tell them good morning and tell them that you're excited to be able to worship alongside of them. A God who is trustworthy, who is faithful. Once again, I'm glad that we are here together in this moment, that we can celebrate the truth of the gospel, the goodness of our King Jesus. We're gonna continue by just declaring this, that he's a trustworthy God, that I can put my faith and my hope in him because it never returns void. Let's sing this together, blessed assurance.
ten living water You're the God of signs and God of wonders If you will it all I can stop it Cause you're working it all for good Yeah you're working it all for good the chains to break God they break Lord when you told that stone to roll away Lord it was obedient so Father as we reflect over all of the things that you spoke and they were God I pray that as you speak today that we will be God I pray that we would follow where you incline watching right now and I just pray God that you would speak to those areas around us and in us 
God, I pray that we could literally believe and have faith that what you've done then, you can still do now. God, we come with such anticipation knowing that 2,000 years ago on this day, you made your way into the city on that Palm Sunday. And God, you looked from a whole different perspective. You had, you had seen the miracles before and you saw the needs that was in Jerusalem that was waiting on you, God. But because of your great love, Lord, you look beyond that day and that moment when you willingly sent Jesus to the cross. God, you saw us now here today in the strongholds and the, the worries, the defeats, the pains, the shames. And God, today we declare that what you've done in the past, you can do it right now. And I pray God do it. I pray you would open up our hearts, God, to believe that God, if you were able to take and part the sea, if you were able, God, to move through the unlikely people in the Old and the New Testament, God, you can use any of us. So I pray, God, I pray as we're in this season and this series talking about taking a step of faith, God, I pray that faith would continue to rise up. Not our faith in ourselves, but our faith in you, God. And may it be rooted and grounded in truth of your word. So in this place, I pray, Holy Spirit, whatever the need is, be glorified. Touch every need, touch every heart, God. out all over this place, I just ask you to, to just between you and God, just ask God. Ask God to speak to your heart. Ask God to actually share with God. Be transparent today and say, God, this is where I'm at. God, help me to take one more step a little bit closer to you. I want to take just a minute. If there's somebody in this place that you've got a need and you need God to touch you, you need someone to pray with you, then I would just ask you to just step out and make your way. We'll wait a few minutes. If there's a need in this house, we just want to be very sensitive. Feel it. 
that you're working You never stop, you never stop working You never stop, you never stop working Even when I don't see it, you're working Even when I don't feel it, you're working You never stop, you never stop working You never stop, you never stop working Oh, even when I don't see it, you're working Oh, even when I don't feel it, you're working You never stop, you never stop working You never stop, oh, you never stop working Way maker, miracle worker Promise keep light in the darkness Oh my God, that is who you are You are a way maker, miracle worker Promise keep light in the darkness Oh my God, oh that is who you are Oh that is who you are That is who you are that is who you are oh, That is who you are It's who you are Oh, it's who you right now in this place there's people just really getting victory and there's others that may be needing prayer I just want us to pray together and feel free if you want to pray out loud as I'm praying let's just pray and thank God that he's here and that God is able and that he is a way maker and today God I thank you and I magnify you God we see time and time again that Lord you are the same yesterday today and forever and God in this room God your presence God is showing that you're in this place and I thank you God for the lives that they are here those that are watching God that you see you see the needs you see the desires you see where you want us to be and I pray God that those, those places, those heavy places, God, that will be broken. I pray that the, the dreams and the desires, God, that we have for you and for to see your kingdom come and your will done here in this place, God, let it be. God, I pray that, Lord, the one that needs that touch, the one that needs the encouragement, the one that needs to share their faith with a friend, the person that's believing for a prodigal to come back, the one that has the addiction, the one that's wrestling with suicide, and the one that's got a bad report physically, I pray that your name would be lifted up high above every situation, and you'd break every stronghold. You'd break the lies of the enemy and shut his mouth. I thank you, God, that when you were lifted up on the cross when Jesus hung on the cross not only was sin broken but the power of death and darkness in the grave it was also broken and God today we walk in the light as you're in the light we pray that no darkness would be able to have have any way any power any authority over us for it's you God yours is the power yours is the authority and God today we exalt you I praise you and I bless you today God, may your word have power in us. God, may we, as we worship you, God, may it just break those strongholds in our lives. God, today we welcome you and we bless you. Thank you for every prayer. Thank you that, God, you are working amazingly together in this place. God, we will just bless you. We bless you, God, and we praise you. That's who he is in the church. He is a way maker.
that God's able to just just be here. Amen. Um, I really enjoy times like this. What this is, is it's unscripted, unplanned, and it's just a time where when you acknowledge and you just know God's here, you just make room. And um, there's nothing that we need more than to know that God's near and with us. And he's here, he hears, and he cares. guys have a song that you're wanting to sing if you do we'll sing it but if not I'll preach <laughs> um, hallelujah praise the one who set me free hallelujah death has lost its grip on me you have broken it Every chain, there's salvation in your name, Jesus Christ, my living hope. How great the chasm that lay, that lay between us, how high the mountain I could not climb. Desperation, I turned to heaven and spoke your name into the night. Then through the darkness, then through the darkness, your loving kindness tore through, tore through the shadows of my soul. The work is finished. The end is written, oh Jesus Christ, my living hope. We sing hallelujah. Hallelujah, praise the one who set me free. Hallelujah, death has lost its grip on me. You have broken every chain, there's salvation in your name, Jesus Christ, my living hope. Then came the morning that sealed the promise. Your very body began to breathe. Out of the silence, the roaring lion. Declare the grave has no claim on me. Come on, church, let's celebrate. Came the morning that sealed the promise. Your buried body began to breathe out of the Hallelujah, 
Death has lost its grip on me. You have broken every chain. There's salvation in your name. Jesus Christ, my living hope. Jesus Christ, my living home. Oh God, you are my living home. You know, maybe this is the first time or one of the first times that you've walked into a building like this. And maybe this experience is a little bit different. It's different for all of us. And you're asking yourself, what is the importance of us singing these songs? Why are people raising their hands? What was the point of this? We sing about this God that we can trust in, a God who never fails, a God who when he speaks, the sun will rise. We look at the Old Testament, he split the waters at the sound of his voice. Next Sunday, we celebrate that our God who was dead, who was buried, defeated the grave so that you and I could have life eternally, but not that you and I would just get to go and have this heaven thing, that he overcame sin and shame, that you and I could dwell with him, that we don't have to go through a priest or perform some ritualistic practice in order to commune with the Father, that the God who created all things is here. And when we're excited about something, when you're excited about your team going to the the game, you get excited and you lift your hands. But for us as believers, we raise our hands and we say, God, I surrender myself, everything that I think is of value. God, I give it up to you because I know that your ways are higher than my own. And we have this symbolic altar where we lay down our burdens, those things that have so weighed upon us that we can come before a God and say, God, I no longer fight on my own behalf. As we sang last week, I know that the battle belongs to the Lord and that when I let him fight on my accord, there's victory. But when I fight for myself, I know that every time I'm gonna be struggling. And so we have this place where we get to lay down our burdens before the Lord, trusting and believing that that God who parted the ocean, that God, who knew you before you were formed in your mother's womb is the same God who fights for you today. And so what is the purpose of this time? Why are we here? Because you have a story. Tomorrow morning, you have a story that starts a new chapter. And I don't know what your Monday looks like. You don't know what my Monday looks like. But the cool thing is that you and I are singing and worshiping the same God. And when you go off to work tomorrow, you've begun your mission field. You've begun the climb of the mountain or in the middle of the battle. And the God who we're singing about today, the God that we have testified and said, I've seen him do it before. And I know that he's gonna do it again this week. So why are we here? Father, we thank you for the encounter. God, we thank you for your spirit. Lord, I pray that today wouldn't just be about us singing songs and going through the motions or trying to have an emotional experience, but God, it would be us humbly in pursuit of more of your presence and less of ourselves so that in hopes we would see this world change for the good of the gospel and the glory of Jesus Christ. God, that you would be so kind to use us for your purposes. Father, we ask that you would open our eyes to love people the way that you love people. God, we ask that you would give us the fruits of the spirit, that you would let us love. God, give us joy, give us this hope. God, give us self-control. God, give us all of these things so that through that people could see the you in us. haven't really 
talked to God that often recently, and it's been a while, you know, maybe I've had a, a little grudge towards God. My encouragement is that in this moment, you could find it just to say, God, I don't understand why it happened, but I know that you are working in it. And this pain and this hurt that I've harbored for so long against you or against a brother or sister, God, I pray that you would take it. God, you would heal it. God, in spite of my pain, heal it. that's hungry Father let us be a hungry church Lord more for your word God believing in your promises but God not that we would keep these things here God let us be hungry to go out and do in your name sing a song that says you are worthy of your name and Luke if you'll pull up the lyrics to that bridge it just declares who we believe God to be this is a this is the why this answers the why are we here you're my author do you believe that he's the author of your story do you believe that he's your maker he is your ransom He's your savior, he's your refuge, he's your hiding place. He's our helper, he's our healer, he's a redeemer. This is a good one here for us, he's an answer. Anybody have unknowns? He's the answer to your unknown. He's my saving grace. This one's good here. He's hope in the shadow when life feels dark. He's strength in the battle. He's an anchor for all my days. He stands by my side. He stood in our place. And that name is Jesus. There is no other name. So Father, God work in our hearts, God work in our minds that we would proclaim no other name but the name of Jesus. Father, because you're worthy. of it all. And as 
your blood fell to the ground. This is good. You redefine my future. Yes, on the day that you arose, all the darkness ran for cover. For the King of Kings has claimed his throne. Oh, now until forever. psychologically you're thinking if I sit down then we're going to be here till tomorrow but God's got something for us to kind of take away today is Palm Sunday and the Bible tells us in Luke chapter 19 that Jesus went up on the mountain of Olive Mount Olive and he was there he had been praying but he had sent a couple of his disciples to go find uh, a donkey to bring so that he could take into the city. And so being at Palm Sunday, that's when Jesus made his triumphant entry into Jerusalem. And it's for the last week on earth, Jesus was about the Father's business, saving, healing, delivering. But he was ultimately, he had one place in mind and he was headed to Calvary. And I want you to get this visual. Jesus, as he's up on a mountain, he's two miles away from the city of Jerusalem. He sees the city. He sees where he's about to go. And sure enough, when they bring this colt, they, they help him up. He rides in. They begin to just, you know, say, man, here, here he is. Here he is. And he's headed into the city for that final week. And there's a statement that, that I, I want to quote. I heard it this week that if all you see is what is seen, then you will never see all that's to be seen. And as Jesus was up on, on the Mount of Olives, he's looking out and he sees. This mountain is so significant. It's, it's right there in eye view of the city that he's actually going into for his final week. But this mountain is not something that just appears and then it's a one-time deal. Jesus, after he goes in and he's ministering for the week, right before 
uh, he's led to his crucifixion. He goes back up on the mountain again. He's up there. He's oftentimes retreating to this particular mountain. And we're in this series on the climb where you're taking a step closer in faith to God. But Jesus sees something. He sees the, the religious crowd. But in the scriptures, I want to read a scripture and then we're going to close. In Luke 19, verse 37, it says, When he came near the place where the road goes down the Mount of Olives, the whole crowd of disciples began joyfully praising God in loud voices for all the miracles that they had seen. Now, they had seen a lot, but they hadn't seen what they're about to see. So I want to say it again. If all you see is what is seen, you will never see all that's to be seen. Let that resonate this week about what does God want to reveal for me to really see. And I want to challenge you, read the encounters of the last week of Jesus' life on earth and see how amazing he is. Because, man, he came. Now, it really disrupted the, the religious crowd because the religious crowd, they're standing back and they're challenging him. Can't you just tell them to be quiet and sit down? It's one of the Pharisees' statement. The Pharisees saw religion. Man, Jesus saw a relationship. The, re, the this religious crowd, they saw, uh, they saw the disciples and how simple they are. Man, Jesus saw love and mercy and grace and redemption. Calvary was a place of victory. But when he's up there on this mountain of olives, which is really, it's a big olive grove. Olives were crushed for anointing oil. Jesus was there. And there's such a parallel that his body was going to be crushed for us. But he came so that we could see what we've never seen. So that we can see what is not yet seen. Through eyes of faith, as we're climbing to seek the face of God, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. But here's what's amazing. Here's the beautiful part in the story. Man, Jesus gave his life. He was resurrected. And it was, again, 40 days later, as he ascended back to heaven, it was from the same mountain that he ascends back to heaven. So today, as we climb to get closer to God, know that Jesus just sees something that we don't see. The visual I had this morning, Cody, was the first retreat that I went with you and the students to the mountains a couple of years ago. When we got to the place, it's a gorgeous place. It was, um, it was late that night. You couldn't see anything. It was dark. And the next morning, there was fog. We talked. And later that day, we took a hike up to the top of the mountain. It wasn't very far. The fog had lifted, and you could just see for miles and miles and miles and miles and miles. It's gorgeous. Sometimes we can't see by the things that's distracting us. The smoke, the fog, the cares of this world. But sometimes when you go up a little bit higher, you can start to see what you've never seen before. But when God is opening our eyes, when God is here to meet you, when God is there to comfort you, when God is, is there to part the seas, He reveals things to us not just for the moments, but it's so that we can see in the days to come. My prayer this week, as you're preparing for Resurrection Sunday, that you would see and allow the Holy Spirit and the Word of God to open up your eyes to really see. To see the beauty of salvation. It was costly and it was ugly as Jesus was beat. But man, Jesus willingly loved us and laid his life down for us. Amen. God be glorified and God I pray this week as we just uh, reflect as we worship as we kind of walk through this week of seeing your final week on earth I pray God that it would just challenge us I pray that God you would give us the vision to help others to see what we've been able to see help us to share the good news that this season really is and God next weekend as we come to celebrate God that we'll see lives changed.
God, I pray that this week, that as we lift you up, you'll draw people everywhere to you, Jesus. We love you. We bless you. We praise you. And we thank you in your name. Amen. Amen. Now, if you will, you can be seated for just a minute and uh, pay attention to the screen and we'll share with you what's happening in the life of Crossover. Good morning, my name is Terry Spencer. I'm one of the deacons here at the church and we want to welcome you for another service at Crossover. We're grateful you're here. We thank you for coming. Here are a few things happening in our church that will hopefully be of interest to you. Join us on Wednesday afternoon, 6.30 for women's ministry, the men's ministry, the students, and the children. We look forward to seeing you there. Join us for a virtual Good Friday service at seven o'clock this Friday, March 29th, wherever you would like to watch the service. Hey guys, those that are visiting today, we certainly welcome you. It's already been mentioned. We have a connect card. If you would like, please fill that out, turn it in. Tell them that you hope they have a great Sunday. And we certainly hope you have a great Sunday. Thank you for being here. Anything else you want to say? I feel like I've botched all of this. I could have recited a poem. Okay, go for it. Roses are red, violets are blue. You are sweet, and so am I. Have a blessed day. If you'd like to apply to become one of our deacons, please uh, take an application at the coffee bar. Uh, other than that, hope you have a great...